Right, I came across this new rib nut tool, so I'm going to share it all with you. It's quite interesting. It took us a while to work this one out, didn't it, Ben? Yeah. We've got Ben helping me today. Zach's at college. Tyler's looking after the little one. Well, I'm going to show you different types of rib nuts in a minute. I thought I'd just... But this is the tool, and we got these, basically these four bits, and we're a little bit baffled by it, but we worked it out in the end. We did have to get a bit of help. But basically, you've got a, a big end and a small end. So this is for M6. This will only do M6 rib nuts. You've got this sort of hollow nut, but you'll notice it's got a hexagonal shape on the inside and the outside. And that allows that to go in there, whoop, like so. And then what you can do is on this end here, you can cap that off with the washer and the nut. And basically what's gonna happen with the rib nut is, and we'll have a look at, as I spin this nut here, this thread moves into the, into the hexa, hexagonal chamber which will compress the rib nut. And then when we're done, we can wind it all the way back out until that's just taken there. So, rib nuts. So basically, rib nuts are designed to compress. This splined area here will squeeze up. Now, let me see if I can find. So this is, these are the same rib nut. The one at the top of the picture there is one that's compressed, and the one at the bottom is the standard one before you get it. So you can see that splined area squidges up. And the idea is it traps on a sheet of metal and forms a captive nut. So this is a way of forming a captive nut. And I'll show you a couple of examples where we have used these on the Land Rover Defender. So when you fit this snorkel, this lovely Land Rover snorkel, there is a little fixing point at the top and you have to drill to put that nut in, bolt in there. And it gives you a captive and you couldn't, this section here, you can't get to the inside to put a nut on. And anyway, then you'd have to have nuts and bolts and spanners and you'd be in the right pickle. Whereas at least with the rib nut, you create a captive nut. I'll put that on in a minute. Right. Another place where you can see it more easily is on this front guard here over the winch cover. It's, it's designed to come with Velcro to hold it on here. But the Velcro was not really working all the time when we were doing some fierce off-road. So I've just come up with that. You can see I've inserted a rib nut there. I just drilled through there, put a bit of wood behind, drilled through, and we'll talk about drilling as well, and then put that through. Right. And that gives you, they work, rib nuts work really well with these little thumb screws, because you can just create something and have a little thumb screw. It's all, no need for spanners and stuff. Right. So, hole side. It's really important when you, drill the hole for the rib nut that it fits as tightly as possible. Um, and also different rib nuts have different compression thicknesses. So what we're gonna do today, we are gonna try and put a rib nut in now. It's a bit thick, this. Normally you would not use material this thick. So we are gonna try, assemble the tool, put it in here and create a captive nut here. Right, so let's have a look. So we've got the tool all set up. First thing you wanna do is spin the rib nut onto the tool. now. It's, it's worth noting that there is a limit here. You, your thread wants really to come all the way to the end. So that, because as it's pulling on those threads, if it's only engaged on one or two, there's a danger you'll strip the threads with the force of pulling it. So we'll measure this and we'll, we'll say what the maximum, let me, I've got a ruler here. What have we got on there, Ben? So it looks like you're about 16-ish millimeters. Your eyes might be better than mine, Ben. Maybe 17. 18. Yeah, 16, 17, yeah. Yeah, so you can spin that on. Now, some rib nuts are blind. So this one you can see there is, it's not hollow. It's like a bucket, like a top hat. And they're good because water can't leak in past the threads. So they're a different sort of, and then you get different flange diameters on here. So if you need a big flange or a smaller flange, it gives it more grip and a better finish. But we're gonna go for a medium flange one today. And different rib nuts have different hole diameters, right? So we've got that on there. It's coming through, it's all good, right? And then we are gonna insert that, insert that. And I haven't done a practice on this, so you can see there it's coming. Now, we've got to try and keep the rib nut pushed square. And then we've got to do, right, so I'm gonna put the, the, so the spanner on there to stop that from, as soon as it starts to grip, we'll be all right. And then I've got to, Rotate this one here. Let me spin it up tight first. Right. Okay, so you've got to keep it square as you can. And then we should start to see that rib nut compressing. 
and it should go tight. And as I say, it's quite a thick bit of metal we're doing here. And I'm trying to keep out the way of the... Right, okay. And when that's all tight, you can then unscrew this and we should be left then with going forever. There we go. And that is our rib nut inserted there. And can we see how much compress? Yeah, you can see it's if it was on a thinner sheet, you'd get a much better example and it would look much more similar to this, where you get a complete ripple. Um, Normally they will form a waterproof joint. If you want a waterproof joint around here, you could put a bit of silicon around before you insert it. But there you go, that is our rib nut tool and we'll get those for sale on the website.